Yeah. Yep. That's not an English. I'm going to go with the audio. I'm just going to come up. Okay. Now we have to click. Good evening. Hi, um, my name is Angela Briggs. I'm the Community Development Manager for the City of Deltona. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We know you all have busy schedules and we're not gonna keep you all long. We just wanna give you all some information that you all can use to help us ensure that we have affordable housing and um, take care of our residents the way that we know. If you're coming out on a Tuesday night, we know you wanna take care of the residents here in Deltona. So um, again, I'm Angela Briggs. We have Mr. Maris Miranda and Mr. Don Hopper, community development also. And we have members of the AHAC committee. Can you guys stand up? The AHAC committee, they're a group of people that we go out and they're realtors, they're lenders, uh, they work in affordable housing in different ways. Uh, and then we have just regular citizens that are members also, thank you guys, that um, they help us every year determine how we use funds. We receive SHIP funds from the state of Florida annually. And as long as we spend those funds, they try to keep giving us funds annually. In addition to we see, uh, receive CDBG funds or community development block grant funds from the federal government. And again, as long as we spend those funds in a proper way, they normally try to uh, give us funds every year. So you guys are here today to help us and to ensure that we keep receiving those funds. Our mandate is to provide affordable housing. Uh, we also do infrastructure. Uh, we do a multitude of things. So um, Without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to Carter Burton. Carter Burton is from Florida Housing Coalition in Tallahassee. She came down today to talk with us about how we can obtain affordable housing here in Deltona. Carter's been with Florida Housing Coalition for seven and a half years. Uh, and she's been in the industry for I think 20 years, you said, right Carter? And she is the mother of a four-year-old by the name of Ridley. So we're gonna introduce you to Carter and there are any questions you have, please ask. That's what we're here for today, okay? Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight. Um, as Angela said, I am Carter Burton, the Director of Housing and Community Development at the Florida Housing Coalition. We are actually headquartered in Tallahassee, but I came to you today from the Ocala area, so not too far away from you, just an hour and a half. Um, tonight, we're actually here to talk about the housing equity plan. This is a document um, that we are going to be developing for the city of Deltona, so we want to talk to you a little bit about that, let you know what that is, what the project purpose is, and also we want to get your input. So community engagement is really the reason why you're here today, because we can't develop develop these documents and we can't get you know work towards those affordable housing solutions or fair housing without your input and the input of the community. So today's agenda, we're gonna go through the objectives of the meeting. We're gonna go through a little bit of the background of what fair housing is and also what is housing discrimination. We're gonna talk about what does AFFH mean. There's a lot of acronyms in the HUD world. Um, so we'll talk about what that acronym means. We'll talk about what a housing equity plan is. And that's the document that we're here to develop. Um, we'll talk to you about what the equity plan process looks like, what the public particip participation process looks like. And then we're gonna have a listening session, which is gonna be an open discussion I think we have enough people here now to break you out at least into a couple of groups. Um, and I want you to talk to your peers. Everybody comes with their own perspectives on things and that's, that's great, but I also want you to hear the perspectives of your neighbors and you know you have people that are on the AHAC and they serve a certain purpose. So it's really good to get together in little small groups so that you can discuss this and then it also gives us information back that we can take to develop this document and come up with fair housing solutions. So the objectives of today's meeting is to inform you on the fair housing planning process. Uh, we want to provide an opportunity for residents and other stakeholders in Deltona to participate in the development of the plan. And we really want to gather your opinions about fair housing issues and how to address them in the city of Deltona. 
So what is fair housing? When I keep saying this, what does that mean? So a little bit of background is that the Fair Housing Act of 1968, it prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of dwellings and other real estate transactions based on race, color, religion, sex, familial status, national origin, and disability. So those are the seven federal protected classes. Some states may have their own protected classes. Florida does not. And then some local governments have chose to adopt their own protective classes on top of these seven federal protective classes. So far right now, um, the city of Deltona does not have any additional protected classes. So when we develop the plan, these are the, the seven protective classes that when we answer questions and we look at data and we're doing analysis, we're gonna see how it impacts these particular protected classes. So what exactly is housing discrimination? What does that look like? So again, the Fair Housing Act prohibits any discrimination based on those seven protected classes in real estate transactions. What that might look like is a refusal to sell, rent, or show available housing. Um, it might be requiring different terms and conditions for identical dwellings. Um, so for an example, charging higher rent or security deposits for different tenants for the same units. Um, being told that the dwelling isn't right for you or for your family. Being told that the housing isn't available in an apartment with a for rent sign. So sometimes people will call and they'll say, oh, I saw this online, it's for rent. And they'll get down there and when the landlord or somebody sees them and maybe they're of color or something like that, um, all of a sudden the, the apartment's not for rent anymore. So that's against the law, that's, that um, is against the Fair Housing Act. Um, housing advertisements that say no kids or adults only because familial status is a protected class. A refusal to make a reasonable accommodation or allow a modification to make the dwelling accessible for individuals with disabilities can also be a fair housing discrimination. Um, harassment or intimidation offering non-standard and unfavorable terms in the purchase of a home or property insurance. So when you purchase a home, you have to get homeowner's insurance, you have to go through a lender most of the time to get financing. There could be discriminatory practices um, or unfavorable terms from one person to another. It needs to be equitable across the board. If they're gonna lend based on certain criteria, that should be the criteria for everyone. If they're gonna provide homeowner's insurance um, based on a certain criteria, that should be a criteria across the board board, or else it could be a discriminatory practice. Terms, let's see, terms of availability that change between a phone call and an in-person visit, like the example that I used before. Being steered to racially segregated neighborhoods during your home search. So this could be for realtors. Um, it's called steering, and that is not allowed. Um, so that would be somebody coming and saying, oh, I think this neighborhood would be perfect for you. So let's go look there. And you're steering them into a certain neighborhood. That's discriminatory. Excessive or inappropriate questions upon requesting information about a dwelling. So whether it's a rental or a home purchase, if you're asking for an application or you're asking for um, any information for them to get into the home, again, this should be equitable information across the board. Um, this can also include source of income. A lot of times source of income is a question that gets asked um, and it's the decisions are made discriminatorily based on their source of income. So a lot of uh, local governments has actually included that as a protection for source of income. So those are some examples of what it would look like to experience housing discrimination. That's not an all-inclusive list by any means, but that just gives you an idea of if you were going through a real estate transaction trying to purchase or rent a home, if you noticed those things or you heard those things, that's an example of how you could be discriminated against if you're a part of a protected class. So then we have this term, affirmatively furthering fair housing. 
What does that mean? Um, so affirmatively furthering fair housing, or what we what we call that acronym AFFH, what this is, this is a HUD term, um, Department of Housing and Urban Development. The city of Deltona receives grant funds through HUD. So they are mandated to comply with federal regulations. In the past, um, they've always had an obligation and a, commi and a commitment to affirmatively further fair housing. In the past, the way to do that was to develop a fair housing plan of some sort. HUD had put into place guidelines for what was called an analysis of impediments to fair housing choice. And that was the document that communities were able to prepare for a very long time in order to comply with that obligation to affirmatively further fair housing. In the last few years, more recent administration pulled that rule and that document was not a requirement any longer. So local governments have kind of been saying, well, we don't need federal regulation to do the right thing and we still wanna have a fair housing plan in place. So now we've been contracted by the city of Deltona to help create a housing equity plan. Again, right now, these documents are not required. However, HUD has put into place a proposed rule, right now it's in public comment period, to put in, um, it's, it's called a rule for affirmatively furthering fair housing, and part of that rule is to require local governments that receive grants through HUD to now develop what's called an equity plan, a housing equity plan. So we thought, well, you know what, if we're gonna develop this fair housing plan, um, we're gonna go ahead and do it in accordance with that proposed rule because that will probably become a final rule and the city of Deltona will be required to comply with that. So you'll be sort of a leg up because we're gonna create this plan in a, sim in a similar manner of how they wanted to lay out um, the questions and the data that we have to gather. So what affirmatively furthering fair housing means, the actual meaning of it is taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities, free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. So that big long meaning, right? That's what we call AFFH. And so, like I said, the city has to do this because they get federal grant funds it's covered under these four community planning development programs under HUD, which is the Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnerships Program, Emergency Solutions Grant, and the Housing Opportunity for Persons with AIDS. Now, the city of Deltona does not receive funds through all of those four. They only receive funds for the Community Development Block Grant, but they still have this obligation to affirmably further fair housing. On top of that, the city's committed to fair housing, so we're gonna develop this plan. So what exactly does the housing equity plan look like? When we start to develop this, what are we trying to put into this document? Since we are gonna be doing it in sort of compliance with this new HUD proposed rule, these are the areas that they've asked for us to analyze. And so we will collect data, we'll collect local data. HUD has maps and graphs that we can use. They have pre-populated data that we can pull, census data. I mean, basically, if you can Google it and find data, we're gonna, <laughs> gonna be doing that, right? And we're gonna pull that data and analyze these different areas. First, we'll be looking at segregation and integration patterns within in the city. So if there are certain areas that are very segregated from others, we're gonna take a look at those areas, we're gonna look at any historical patterns of discrimina discrimination in those segregated areas. We're also gonna be looking at what um, HUD terms racially or ethnically concentrated areas of poverty, or recaps. Um, and that's exactly what it says, they are racially or ethnically concentrated areas of poverty. Now, the city of Deltona actually does not have any recaps. So HUD, when they give us this map, they outline the recaps for each entitlement community or grant recipient. And the city of Deltona is a smaller community as far as the grant funds that it receives through HUD. So you actually do not have any designated recaps. However, that does not mean that you don't have any areas within the city that might be more segregated than others. So we're still gonna take a look at that segregation and integration and patterns of discrimination within those areas, whether you have a recap, you know, officially or not. 
We're also gonna be looking at disparities in access to opportunity. So what that means is, um, what are the what are, what does it look like in the community to have access, um, specifically with affordable housing, towards transportation or employment, or healthcare, or you know um, healthy living, grocery stores, all that kind of stuff. We're going to sort of look at that the the relationship between affordable housing and access to opportunities because affordable housing is usually, or lack of affordable housing, is usually the number one fair housing barrier. And when you look at fair housing and affordable housing, it's sort of the umbrella to you have to have transportation, employment, services, all of that underneath it in order to have, you know, successfully have solutions for affordable housing and fair housing. So we're going to be looking at what that looks like, um, that relationship for access to opportunity within the city. Um, we're also going to be looking at inequitable access to affordable housing and home ownership opportunities. So again, remember this all pertains to those seven protected classes. So we're gonna be looking at those protected class categories and then we're gonna be analyzing what does access to affordable housing look like within the city? First of all, what does affordable housing look like within the city? We know that there's a lack of affordable housing nationwide. It's, it's you know, at this point, especially within the last few years, values have risen tremendously. The market's shifted up, shifting, starting to shift back down a little bit. We've had low interest rates, now we have high interest rates, um, but affordable housing and lack of has remained, and it's still a challenge. So we're going to be taking a look at that as that as the relationship from affordable housing to those protected classes. And then also access to home ownership opportunities. Um, are there home ownership programs? Are there, you know, the, the public housing authority, do they have self-sufficiency programs that help lead into um, home ownership? We're gonna take a look at all of that, you know, um, lending programs, do they have first-time home buyer programs for the protected classes? You know, we're gonna, kind of dive deep into what home ownership looks like um, for those protected classes. We're also going to look at your laws, ordinances, policies, practices, and procedures that may impede the provision of affordable housing. So when we do this, we're gonna look at your zoning codes, we're gonna look at your land use codes, we're gonna look at you know permitting process, um, fees, impact fees, um, all of these, you know, we'll look at NIMBYism, not in my backyard syndrome, all of that kind of stuff. We will look and see if there's any local policies that are actually impeding um, building affordable housing or access to affordable housing. So we do a, a deep dive into your policies and your ordinances um, and take a look at that and we'll point out anything that we feel maybe, you know, as far as development goes, there might be a policy that, hey, if you did this and allowed, you know, um, less parking or something like that, that could help build units, um, affordable units. So we'll look at anything that impedes um, development or access to affordable housing. We're also going to be looking at inequitable distribution of local resources. So that could be your state programs, like your SHIP program, State Housing Initiative Partnership Program, your CDBG program, um, the Community Development Block Grant program, or even general funds or funds that are received throughout the city. We want to look and see what types of activities are happening, how are they being prioritized, and where is the funding going? And how does that relate to funding towards um, fair housing for or protected classes. How is it affecting that? How is it imp impacting that? Um, so we want to see where the city's resources are going. And then the last bit here is sort of um, enforcement. Uh, discrimination or violations of civil rights law or regulations related to housing or access to community assets. So what we're going to do there is we're actually going to be getting a hold of um, the Florida Human Rights Commission and we look up the Department of Justice and HUD has a website too. We look on there to see if there's any um, fair housing claims that have been filed within the last five years for the city of Deltona. And when we find any, if we, if we find any claims, we talk about what the basis of discriminatory was, uh, discrimination was. Um, and it says whether or not that case had been resolved. Um, and so we put that in a sort of a chart in this plan so that we can see any patterns or trends of discrimination um, or historical patterns of discrimination throughout the last five years when it comes to fair housing and the protected classes. 
And so all of this um, that we analyze and we write up and we'll map out some stuff, all of that kind of stuff, um, results in us setting goals, we'll be establishing, so we'll, we'll basically identify from this analysis what the fair housing issues or fair housing barriers are in the city of Deltona, and we will set goals from that. So we'll prioritize those, those fair housing issues, we'll set measurable goals in order to overcome barriers to fair housing and ensure access to opportunity for all, regardless of the protected characteristics. So we just want to show you a little visual of what this process is going to look like. Um, this will probably be going into, I would say, mid-summer or, or a little bit beyond as well as we work on this document and get the draft together for public comment. But you can see at the core of our graph here is community participation because that's going to be happening throughout the process. We have several ways that we're going to engage with stakeholders and engage with the public because, like I said when I started this, we can analyze data and get that qualitative data um, or quantitative data, but we need that qualitative data as well. And we use your or input as data just as much as we use any of the numbers or statistics that we find. So we're going to incorporate your feedback and your input into the plan because it's going to show us if there's any similar patterns or trends that people are saying for discrimination throughout the city. So that community participation will be going on, um, and then we're going to collect and analyze all of that data I just showed you um, in those categories. We'll be collecting that data and analyzing it. And then we're going to assess the fair housing issues based on that comprehensive analysis. We're going to go ahead and prioritize any um, impediments that we find or fair housing issues that we find. We're going to set those measurable goals in order to address or mitigate fair housing issues. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to integrate those goals and strategies into the housing equity plan, but also into subsequent plans for HUD use of funds. So what I mean by that is we have the housing equity plan and we outline what the barriers to fair housing are, and we outline solutions and goals for, for mitigating that. However, this plan is not tied to funding. So we can recommend you'll probably need this much funding or here's where you can go for resources to mitigate these fair housing issues. But this plan is actually not right now tied to getting funding. But the consolidated plan is a document that currently the housing department is, is developing and that has to be submitted to HUD every five years to tell HUD this is what we're going to do with our allocation. So what we do is we take the information from these housing equity plan and we incorporate it into a fair housing section within the consolidated plan. So that becomes information that in the consolidated plan can be considered and funding possibly could go towards those activities for the next five years. So I said we were going to be doing public participation throughout the process, and that is true. Um, we are starting with these two meetings. We have this meeting tonight, and then we also have a meeting on Tuesday, the 23rd, next Tuesday, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., right back here in the chambers. Um, we will be providing HUD-provided data and maps upon request from the city of Deltona. Um, you can also find this on this website here, the egis.hud.gov. If you pull up that website and you pick um, place and then Deltona and Florida, it'll bring up different maps for you and you can break it down into data tables and all of that sort of stuff. So we take a look at those and we analyze them, but they are available either on that website or we can make them available upon request. Um, we're also having these public meetings, you know, with residents, housing and homeless partners, public service providers, lenders, realtors, landlords, public housing residents, and other stakeholders. And then we also have our virtual engagement. So when you came in, you should have been able to get a handout. And if you look at that handout, it's going to show you um, our FHC Connect page, and it'll say De Deltona Housing Equity Plan. And it has um, the link to our virtual community engagement site. And it also has a QR code that you can scan with your phone if you want to. And basically what this does is it leads you to a platform for virtual community engagement, which is really convenient for everybody. Um, and there's several different ways to engage once you get to that page. There's a fair housing survey, which we would really encourage you to go on and take for us. That would be really great, giving us a lot of information from that survey. But there's also a fair housing 
housing poll that you can participate in. There's a discussion forum where you can actually post something in the discussion forum. People can like your post. Um, people can you know talk to you that way, sort of peer to peer interaction, so that we can see you know different comments that people are making and if there's any similar patterns or trends going on with that. And then there's also the guest book. And the guest book is where we'll, we'll be posting a draft plan for comment. So we'll, we'll put out a public notice, but we'll also be posting it on this website. So you can actually comment on the draft plan through the guest book on this website. So we really encourage you to go ahead and go to that site. It is clickable. Um, I think it's up on Facebook page and social media pages at the city of Deltona with a clickable link. And then this um, sheet here also has a QR code to scan as well if you want to do it quickly that way. Um, but we really want you to go on and participate in those features. That helps us you know, really gather a lot of information that we can use. We'll also be doing direct agency consultations. So we'll be talking to housing partners throughout the city of Deltona. Um, we'll do a direct interview with them, whether it be via phone or Zoom. We're gonna connect with them one way or another and get um, feedback for basically specific to their organization related to housing and fair housing and the, and the populations that they serve. And then we will have a public hearing at the end where hopefully commission will adopt um, the housing equity plan. And there will also be a 30 day public comment period. So when we have a public comment period on the draft, we'll post that for 30 days, we'll put out a public notice saying it's available for comment. And again, it'll be posted on that FHC Connect community engagement site and you can comment through the guest book. Okay, so before we do breakouts and really just have this open discussion listening session, are there any questions about all of that information that I just threw at you? <laughs> Anybody have any particular questions? So normally we pu we put a public notice out for these meetings. So we have this meeting and next meeting. Um, well, we encourage, and I believe you did, we encourage not only just the public notice because we know that public notices in newspapers aren't really widely seen these days. Yeah, but we use newspapers, we use social media. So you guys have Facebook, Twitter, probably LinkedIn, and I'm, I'm assuming you put that up on all your social media pages. She's nodding yes. So social media, um, all of those, those social media pages. Um, most of the time you do a press release. Um, you know, you can get as creative as you want depending on how far the city wants to go with it. So sometimes they can do utility inserts um, to put notifications in those. But I believe so far we've done public notices, we have the virtual engagement site, we have the companion marketing piece that goes with that. That's been blast emailed to stakeholders, social media, public notices, press release, right? And sometimes there's a news, like a radio spot. I'm not sure if you guys have done that yet. So we try to reach all avenues and we try to be very accessible. So our whole process is um, we, and very inclusive and we wanna make sure that accessibility is at the forefront of that as well. Um, so our website, for example, is in compliance with WCAG or web content accessibility standards, all of that. So we try to find broad ways to really reach everybody, which is hard, but we try our best to get it out there. that you're holding there to the website. 
Um, we've had communities that blow that up onto cardboards and take it to events and, you know, set it up at a stand. So if you have any community events going on, we, of course, encourage you to internally go out there and, you know, have some advocates for you that hand out things and, and set up events and tables and all that kind of stuff. Um, so hopefully... If you have anything coming up, um, neighborhood associations is a great way to connect in their meetings and get the word out as well. Um, so we sort of ho hope that you can advocate for us as well and let people know once you've been here, you know, here, go to this page and, and come to this meeting. So any other questions about the information that was just presented? Um, either about fair housing, what it is, the housing equity plan itself. Okay, so this part is gonna be our listening session. And I think I lost my presentation, but I um, had a couple other slides up there. <laughs> but if they have to go, it's okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna hand out our listening session page. And what I really wanna do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 11. Uh, what's that? We'll do that. Oh, so 12. Okay, so why don't we do like six and six? and. I know people don't like to move after they've sat down, but um, if, I would like to break you up into groups. The reason why we do this, and I want you to talk as a group, is because exactly what I said before. You have your own inspect, uh, perspective. Everybody comes and they think one way about fair housing and or housing issues or affordable housing, and we want to hear your perspective, but I also want you to talk to your neighbors and talk to the group and hear their perspective. I also am asking you for one or two of those questions to, as a group, come up with top priorities because that's something that we have to do is start especially for funding we have to prioritize the needs so it's always interesting when you start prioritizing as a group you sort of see how hard that is for the city <laughs> to prioritize um, all of these needs for what's going to get funded um, so I do want to break you out in in small groups that you can answer these questions so if we want to go right down the middle one two three four five like here and here Okay, if you have to leave, that's okay, then, you know, no problem. Um, I think we still have enough even when you guys leave for a little group. So if you guys want to kind of just split off, I'm gonna hand out an index card. We normally have it around tables, so you're welcome to go back to the tables if you wanna write, but if you wanna stay where you are, then I'll just hand out the cards and you guys can sort of stay and discuss, okay? It's the other 